these two legendary brands have something to prove, that they still care about driving enthusiasts. BMW, because they've gotten a little too preoccupied with SUVs and electric city cars lately. And Alfa Romeo because, well, they've been gone since 95. There's a huge swath of car buffs out there who haven't even seen an Alfa in person. And even fewer know why they should still care about the brand today. Yes, we know these coupes are very different, but they're both blue-blooded, four-wheeled love letters to winding roads and track days. The question is, which one's best? This is the 2016 M2, and it's something new for BMW, a driver's car. Lately, the brand known for the ultimate driving machine, it's gotten a little soft around the middle, kind of like me. It's a little bit more comfort oriented. It's not quite as hardcore as it used to be, but not this M2. So this M2, it's what the Brits would call a Bitsa car. A lot of two series in it, obviously, but Bitsa M3, M4, a little bit of three series, but that doesn't mean it doesn't drive with a single-minded purpose. And frankly, it's got more soul, more oomph than anything that's been in BMW's showroom in quite some time. At under 3,500 pounds, this car is what passes for light these days. And with 365 horsepower, it's plenty quick. It's stiffer, it's more connected, and it's raw. All kidding aside, this M2, it's got just enough tech in it they start at around 52 grand, mine is 57, and that includes a lightning quick dual clutch gearbox. And every M2, it's got an active sport differential and a multi-mode drive selector that lets you put it in sport plus for the twisty bits. So listen, there's no active aero here. You won't find all wheel drive. You won't even find an adjustable suspension. It's all about you getting it done behind the wheel. The one thing I don't like, this open carbon fiber trim looks like it came off of Team Golden Girls Racing more rattan than anything else. So compared to Johnny's car, this has a fair amount of creature comforts. It's got dual zone climate control. It's got a navigation system that actually works. It's just enough to make this a usable everyday vehicle. You don't have to be a part of team masochist over there. Ha, you think that's raw? No, this is raw. I'm in an Alfa Romeo 4C, which starts at around $56,000 for the coupe. I'm in the Spider, which is a little more expensive, but it still has a carbon fiber chassis, kind of like a McLaren and a LaFerrari, but at a fraction of the cost. There's also a 237 horsepower turbo four cylinder sitting midship, a dual clutch transmission, composite body panels, carbon seats, and void of anything that's unnecessary like navigation, heated seats, and sound insulation. The result is a beautiful, fast, and balanced 2400 pound machine that's built to tear through bends and around racetracks with grip and composure. The downside to such a performance-focused machine is that it's brutal on the street. It's really loud, there's not much given suspension, it's difficult to maneuver in parking lots with the unassisted steering, inside there's hardly any cubbies to hold things, and there's not much of a truck in the back. Clearly, comfort, practicality, and creature comforts definitely aren't high on the 4C's to-do list. There are, however, some basic features like power windows, mirrors, a one-din alpine stereo system with Bluetooth, and a USB input. The techiest item in here is a 7-inch TFT gauge display. Other than that, it's bare bones, which is fine for hardcore enthusiasts, but I'm guessing not good enough for coddled BMW drivers. As good as the 4C is on twisty back roads, it's even better on track here at Gentleman Raceway. What makes the 4C so good on track? For one, the steering. It's manual, so feedback and response is instant. Number two, the light curb weight. It's only 2,400 pounds, so throwing this thing around the track into corners and diving deep into brake zones is really easy. Another thing would be the brakes. The pedal feedback is super firm, and after doing lap after lap this morning, it never went away. The drivetrain is crude. There's a lot of whirling and whooshing, but there's really good power in the middle of the rev range. As for a dual clutch transmission, while it's not the best gearbox that I have used, it does respond fairly well to upshifts and downshifts. Some dislikes that I have about the 4C is that for a mid-engine car, there's more understeer and corners than you would expect. And as for something that a lot of people may not like about the 4C is that you can't jump into it and just drive the wheels off of it and expect to have good lap times. 
it's actually a car that you have to learn and pay attention to and actually really focus behind the wheel when it comes to steering inputs, your braking, and how hard you jump on the accelerator. And once you spend a lot of time on track with it, you learn the nuances of the car, and it's really good. So it's no surprise that after coming out of the Alpha, this M2 feels a little bit like a tank. You know, the, there's not enough weight to the steering, the brakes are a little bit spongy, but those are just sins by extreme comparison. And that's because the 4C is so uncompromising. Complaining that the M2 is too soft, it's like saying that John Cena is fat and slobby because he's standing next to Usain Bolt. On the track, this is still far more entertaining a car to drive than most everything else at its price point. I just came out of an Audi TTS, I would much rather be in this car here. And frankly, I'd rather drive this car than an M4. The M2 has gobs of grip from its Michelin tires, and turn-in is really keen. It's ultra quick. It's actually better than the Alpha. Maybe something you wouldn't expect. If I have any complaints about this car steering, it's that there's no feel, especially compared to something like the 4C that's unassisted. Oddly enough, the back end is more talkative than the front. You've got 343 foot-pounds of torque back there, plus an electronic limited slip differential, and it really enables you to adjust in the corners. Compared to the 4C, this M2 is a really forgiving car, but that doesn't make it boring. There's still plenty here to master. And besides, if you want more soul, you can save a couple thousand dollars and get the manual gearbox. That's something you can't get in the Alpha at all. Well, that was a fun day at Gingerman Raceway. I went through two tanks of gas in the Alfa Romeo 4C, but I have to say that M2 is a pretty good car itself. Good engine, great turn in. I think it looks fantastic too. The brakes need a little work. They're starting to go away. The steering's a little overly light. I'm not actually bothered by how light the steering is. What I don't like is the lack of feel. But I tell you what, it does have sensational turn in. I love the three liter and it just has so much power and poise. You can adjust the back end with the throttle. It's just a lot of fun. And of course, the 4C, what a gorgeous little supermodel of a car. It is fantastic to have Alfa Romeo back in this market, let alone with such a pure product that's all about driving enjoyment and nothing else. You know, I've had that M2 all week long. It's been breaking necks everywhere we go. But next to you, I'm like driving a tan Camry over here. It's true, it is gorgeous. I've had tons of people come to me as well, giving me thumbs up on the expressway and whatnot. But like you said, raw. This car is super raw, super pure, and great on the track. And for Alpha to come out and build a car like that and sell it to the public when they know they're probably not going to sell that many, I have to respect them for that. So this car is so much fun on the track. It's got that awesome steering feel. And it's something that you really need to spend a lot of time with to get your arms around. Well, we're at the end of our shootout here. So that means one thing, we have to pick a winner. And it's a really tough one. These are two very different approaches to solving the $60,000 sport coupe problem. And I have to be honest with you, I think the BMW is just a better balanced car, something I'm going to want to drive every day, but I can still have a great time here on the track. And I have to agree with you, the 4C is great on track, but if I had to buy one car with $60,000 and you can only have one car, I'd probably be with the M2. Again, the Alpha is gorgeous, but if I'm going to buy a car that's this focused, this single-minded, this once a week kind of car, I'm going to get something even more crazy like an Ariel Atom. So I think we're both in agreement. The winner of this roadshow shootout is the BMW M2.